Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran, whether you have gathered with us uh, here in person or you have gathered with us uh, near and far uh, over Facebook Live. Uh, we are so glad that you have uh, joined us uh, here for worship uh, this evening. A few uh, brief uh, announcements and reminders uh, for our worship service uh, here tonight. Uh, first of all, I, as I look out, it looks like everyone's doing well uh, having uh, their masks on, so thank you all for continuing to do that. Uh, as you uh, came in, uh, you should have received a bulletin. Uh, if you did not, uh, please do uh, raise your hand and our officers will make sure to bring you one. Uh, you also should have uh, received a communion cup in a little uh, Ziploc bag. Uh, later on in our service, uh, we will have uh, a chance for communion. Uh, so for those of you who have gathered here in person, um, first of all, if you do not get one, once again, raise your hand. Our ushers will bring you one. Uh, later on, um, I will invite all of you uh, to take them out, and we will receive communion together. Uh, this will be following uh, the Lord's Prayer, where I will hold up uh, the wafer, which is right on top. There's two separate seals. Um, I'll hold up the wafer, and I'll say the body of Christ given for you. And then we'll peel and we will receive the bread and we'll do the same thing with the with the juice i'll say the blood of christ shed for you and we will together receive uh, the sacraments uh, as one uh, as you uh, finish with with that please do uh, put it back in uh, your little ziploc bag and there is a waste basket where you can place them at the end of the service um, Let's see. <laughs> Along with that, our, our offering uh, will not be, uh, the offering plates will not be passed. Instead, as you saw as you came in, they are at the back of, this, of the sanctuary. Uh, the sharing of the peace, we ask that you uh, just kind of stay where you're at and turn and say hello. We can wave or show uh, sh uh, share a sign of peace that way. Um, I also forgot, uh, for those of you who have gathered up with us from home, if you have uh, bread, wine, or grape juice available, uh, you're invited to have that uh, ready as we will, uh, as you will uh, be able to join us in having communion. And if only having one of those uh, at home is where you're at, that's perfectly okay. Um, still receiving uh, bread or wine or grape juice or any of the two means that you are still receiving the fullness of the sacrament. Now, candles, a couple things. Yes, I have to set my book, my uh, worship binder down. Couple things. So it's been a couple years uh, since we've done this, and our demonstration person is at the back. So um, we're going to try and do this here. So those of you uh, who have them, as you receive uh, the, the the fire, the candle from uh, the person next to you, please tilt like this to receive uh, the the flame. Uh, and as we as you do that, see, seek to help each other out uh, to, re to receive uh, the candle as they're, they're lit. Now the tricky part. As you look around, we're all masked, right? <laughs> I thought about a couple of different ways to extinguish them, a couple of which might set the church on fire. We're not going to do that. <laughs> um, the way that I think might work the best is as follows. So if you hold it in front of your of your of your mouth, in front of your mask, and quickly lower your mask, put it right back up. <laughs> These are the COVID world. This is the COVID world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. These are the things I had to think about this past week. Actually, if you ask Dolores and, and Pat and Deb, I was thinking about it last weekend myself. Um, so if you could give that a try. Uh, at the conclusion of a uh, silent night, and as we extinguish our candles, um, please do keep in mind the, the COVID world that we're living in as you extinguish and try not to take too big a breath when you extinguish your candles. <laughs> Everything clear as mud? <laughs> Excellent. I will seek to remember to remind you of all of that information. There will be a quiz at the end. <laughs> But with that, uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Please rise. We gather together this evening in the same way that we live, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our gathering litany, which is printed in your bulletins. With the prophet Isaiah, we proclaim the promise of God. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Because Christ has been born in the world, we respond in wonder. With the angels, we sing glory to God. With the shepherds, we share the good news. With Mary, we ponder the words of this night, and the word has come into the world. And he is named Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Rejoice in this good news of great joy. Today is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Let us join in singing uh, hymn number 283, verses 1 through 3 of O Come, All Ye Faithful. We celebrate your coming as our Savior. Let men and women and angels sing of your glory. O splendor of the Father's light, with all the creatures on earth, we sing and dance at your birth. Praise and honor and glory 
to you, O Lord. Let us join in singing our next hymn, hymn number 296, What Child Is This?
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
You will find him a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, they, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as if it had been told to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Lord Christ. Please be seated. Dear siblings in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, and the Word made flesh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I'm sure is the case with all of you, the year 2021 has been an up and down year for you, filled with times of hope, times of worry, and those times when we just don't know what we should be doing. Yet we continue to live into this new and really ever changing reality. As we do, we are filled with hope. We are filled with worry. We are filled with joy, and we're not always certain in the thing we should be doing next. So what happens to us these days when we do hear good news? Do we get excited? Can we not wait to tell others about this good news? Do we have no reaction at all? Do we wait, as so often has happened lately, for the other shoe to drop? Can we hardly believe our ears? My guess is, with each passing day, we experience a little bit of each of this, as good news comes to us, however infrequent that may seem. Today, we hear once again this familiar story of good news of great joy, that Jesus Christ is born today. For those hearing this news in our scripture reading, they respond in much the same ways we do. Some hope, some worry, some not knowing what to do, at least at first, and of course, joy. As we encounter this familiar story once again, pay close attention to, to how each of these characters that we heard about tonight and some that we've heard about through the season of Advent have responded because their responses are very close, if not the same, as our responses to this news. Of course, first we start with Mary and Joseph. Back in Luke 1, Mary is informed by this angel, by the angel Gabriel, that while she is in Nazareth, she is told by the Lord that she is favored, and that she will give birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Mary does not know how to respond at first to these greetings and this message this angel has brought to her, that this is supposed to be good news. You are to give birth to the Son of God? A little pressure there, right? It doesn't take long, however, before she willingly says yes to this calling that God has given to her. Joseph, the one to whom she is engaged, is not with her when this news comes to her. But we know that he is fearful for what might come his way and come Mary's way. As our reading here in Luke 2 begins, we hear that Mary and Joseph, 
begin to make their trip from the northern part of Israel in, Gal in Nazareth to the, to the southern part of Bethlehem, so that they can participate in their version of the census. While they are in Bethlehem, Mary gives birth. There was no hospital, no hotel room for them to stay in. They stay in this shared, in this space that's essentially a guest room, the shared living space that people have with animals. And it is there that Jesus is born. As Mary experiences all of this, she treasures everything that she is told and sees and hears. Next, we have the shepherds. Now, a little background about shepherds. They were not considered the highest of the high. They were actually fairly low on the totem pole in terms of their status in society. But the shepherds become the first messengers of the birth of Christ. As the shepherds are encountered by the angels, they are out in their fields. And they are told of the birth of the Savior of the world while they are there. And of course, they're initially fearful. The angels come to them and say, do not be afraid. Which, if anyone comes to you and says, don't be afraid, your first reaction is what? To be afraid, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not where they stay. They don't stay in the, st in the state of fear. For what they're about to hear is good news of great joy, as they are told, to you was born this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is the Messiah. The shepherds, after experiencing all of this, go, go now into Bethlehem to tell of the good news that they have seen and heard and experienced. Quite the start. Next, we're going to back up a little bit to Elizabeth and John the Baptist, who we encounter in the early parts of Luke, but they are just as important in this story. We hear about these two in the latter parts of chapter one, as Elizabeth, a relative of Mary, is visited by Mary. Mary has just been told that she will give birth to Jesus. As she arrives, Elizabeth greets, is greeted by Mary, and the child in Elizabeth's womb, who we know as John the Baptist, leaps for joy from inside Elizabeth's womb. And immediately, Elizabeth shares that same joy, and she is filled with the Holy Spirit and gives thanks for this visit and explains the blessings that Mary has received from God. And finally, those experiencing and hearing this word, this good news of great joy, we have all of you, those who have gathered with us near and far, the people of God. The people who have experienced more than we would care to experience ever again these last two years. For some of you who have gathered here, gathered with us virtually, tonight is a celebration. This Christmas Eve is a celebration of joy and hope and wonder as we hear this story once again, as we gather together once again, perhaps as you are gathering with family and friends that you may not have been able to see last Christmas. For some of you, tonight is not a celebration. For some of you, Christmas can be and is a time of uncertainty, a time of loneliness, sorrow, and perhaps you are even experiencing your first Christmas without a loved one or a friend. No matter what you are experiencing during this Christmas season, whether it is joy, whether it's hope or worry or uncertainty, know with confidence that our God, our Savior, our Emmanuel, our God with us walks with you in your journey and loves you. No matter your circumstance this Christmas, 
Know that you are not alone in your experiences of joy or sorrow or hope or despair or any of those or none of those. Your siblings in Christ walk with you. Tonight, as we gather, and as I was getting ready for the service, I was reminded of the words of Dr. Seuss, as we so often are this time of year. In the famous How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And the transformation that the Grinch experiences throughout that story. But in particular, I'm reminded of this part of the story. And I quote, and the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. As he puzzled and puzzled, so his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, didn't come from a sore? What if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? Tonight, whether we have gathered here at the church at Grace Lutheran, whether, whether we have gathered around our phones and our laptops and our iPads and our living rooms and our dining rooms or our bedrooms, whether we are here in the Ely area or somewhere near or far, we are reminded that no matter where we are, the promise of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, that God comes to us, comes to change our hearts, and comes to change the world. Jesus comes to the shepherds in the fields, to Mary and to Joseph in a stable. Jesus comes to us tonight, no matter how or where we have gathered or how we are feeling as we gather. Tonight, this message of Christmas is the most important, that Christ comes always for you, not just at Christmas, every day. This word made flesh that comes to remind us that God walks with us along our way. So tonight, remember, Jesus comes to you. And after all that we continue to experience, tonight, that promise means just a little bit more. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join in singing in number 279, A Little Town of Bethlehem.
Thank you. Let us join together in a confession of our faith found in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God the Father, God the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, from God light, from light from light. True, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. made. For, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, with the of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we join together in our prayers and intercession, I will end each petition with, as we pray, live, and serve, please respond with, shine your everlasting love. Rejoicing in the good news of the Word made flesh, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. <laughs> Living God, help us to bring your Church on earth together during this Christmas season, so that we may bear witness to the light that scatters the darkness. As we pray, live, and serve, shine, shine your everlasting light. Creator God, guide us to care for the earth, the sources of water, food, and animals of all kinds, so that we may share your good creation with all who are in need. As we pray, live, and serve, shine, shine your everlasting light. God of peace, in the midst of the chaos, your son was born. Instilled into our elected leaders in this country and around the world a desire for justice and peace. As we pray, live, and serve. God of the Incarnation, continue to remind us of your presence among us, especially with those affected by COVID-19, those who are sick, hospitalized, those grieving the death of loved ones, and all those in the medical profession Call to care for those who are sick as we pray, live, and serve. God of healing, help those who are hurting in mind, body, or spirit to know that you are present in the midst of distress. Today, we especially lift up Erica, Lyle, Amy, Zach, Byron, Brian, Vicki, Dick, Shannon, Beverly. Mary Lou, Diane, Andy, Dave, Carla, and all those we may now allow or in the silence of our hearts. As we pray, live, and serve. Shine your everlasting light. Emmanuel, God with us, instill into us a sense of joy as we receive your Son into this world. Help and guide us to be faithful witnesses of your blessed hope and love as we pray, live, and serve. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who came to dwell among us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. You're invited to share a sign of peace with one another. And those who have gathered with us on Facebook, may share a sign of peace in the comment section. You may be seated. As we continue to receive our offerings, whether placed in the, uh, the plates at the back of the sanctuary or in whatever manner that you need, let us give thanks for those that, that we receive. God of life and light, we give thanks for the good in our lives, and we celebrate the birth of your Son, the greatest gift of all. We offer ourselves, our time, our gifts, that we may live as blessings in the world, bringing your light and love wherever we go. Amen. Amen. A reminder that as uh, we enter into this time of communion, if you have not yet uh, received or uh, gotten uh, one of the uh, communion cups as you came into the sanctuary, uh, you're invited to uh, do raise your hand. Our ushers will make sure that you have uh, a sufficient amount for uh, the folks in your uh, family unit. Uh, for those who have gathered with us online, you're invited to have that bread and wine and grape juice ready. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table of the Lord, for all are welcome here. Amen. This time you're invited to remove your mask and get out your communion cups. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Receive a blessing. You have become what you have received, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, our Savior, that through this meal you have united us as siblings in Christ. As we leave this table fed and nourished, may we serve the world as your hands and feet, bringing healing and fullness and new life. Make us the stars that shine brightly, guiding the, the world to see your love. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I, you are invited to have your uh, candles ready. Uh, and as uh, our ushers will pass the light, remember to, uh, to tip your uh, candle, and uh, our ushers will pass them, pass it down the rows. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, for without Him not one thing came into being. But His coming into being in Him was life, and the life was the life of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Let us sing number 281, Silent Man. Thank you. 
receive a blessing. On this silent night, love's pure light has come. On this holy night, wondrous love is given. On this joyous night, hope is renewed, peace is shared, and new life is born. May God grant you hope, all love, and all light in the name of Christ our Savior on this night and on all nights. We bear the light of Christ in our hearts. Now blow out your candles and be God's light in the world. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we join together in singing our singing hymn, hymn number 267, Joy to the World.